good day everyone so today the topic is estimation of distillation time cycle in a batch reactor in the last video we have discussed about estimation of heating as well as the cooling times in a batch reactor and this is about estimation of the distillation time cycle so let's get into the topic I'll mention the case now. Distill out solvent under vacuum below 50 degrees centigrade. Retaining 500 liter of volume. This is the case given and now while performing or while estimating the capacity of a specific stage or of a product we need to understand what is the time cycle required for a specific operation so if we got only the product like the draft process without any execution then we need to estimate these things using some theoretical calculations in such case we will see how to estimate the distillation time cycle now The reactor capacity is 5 kL. So, here in this case, today I am going to deliver you two types of methods. First thing is additional thing, and the second thing is going to be the actual thing. The result of the second calculation is going to be more appropriate when considered to the first one. The reactor MOC is SS316 and the heat transfer radian this I have taken from the GA drawings or else we can estimate this using the theoretical calculations which we have shown in the last video the overall heat transfer coefficient Since this is a SS316 reactor, I am going to consider it in the range of 250 kilocalorie per hour meter square degree centigrade. The reaction mass volume. I am going to consider total 80% of the volume that is 4 kL. Here they have mentioned the mass temperature as below 50 degrees. And in this case, I will be considering that the mass is getting vaporized at 35 degrees centigrade. The jacket in temperature is 5 degrees in excess to the maximum temperature of reaction mass that is 50 degrees plus 5 it is 55 the jacket out is 51 degrees I will be taking 4 degrees of delta T in the reactor jacket the solvent is toline coming to the solvent properties density of toline is approximately 0.868 kg per liter the latent heat is approx 90 kilocalorie per kg these are the details we got now using the first method we are going to return the theoretical time required for completion of distillation and one more thing that we have left is the final volume is 500 liter. Now let's try to identify the demand. 
demand equals to I mean to lambda. Why? Because it involves the latent heat transfer. I mean to mass and this we know 4k. So that means it's 4000 liter minus the final volume is 500 liter. Using this, we can understand what is the amount that need to be vaporized. And I'm going to multiply the volume with the density so that I'll be getting the mass 0.868 or else I'll try to link it up here itself. These many cases I have to vaporize. And coming to latent heat, it is already mentioned there as 90 kilocalorie per kg. Now the process demand is m lambda, that is 3038 multiplied with 90. Total 2,73,420 kilocalorie of energy is required to vaporize 3038 kg of toluene. Now we need to estimate the supply. The supply is UA LMTD. Now in this case, we know the overall heat transfer coefficient as 250. We know the area. Then the next one is we have to estimate the LMTD. LMTD equals to just a minute. Okay, this could look LMTD equals to jacket in temperature minus the reaction mass temperature minus of jacket outlet temperature minus reaction mass temperature divided by ln of again jacket in temperature minus mass temperature divided by jacket out temperature minus mass temperature. Here in this case, the LMTD is 17.93 degrees centigrade. The effective heat transfer area, this is going to be the total heat transfer area multiplied by the occupancy, that is nothing but 4 divided by 5. So it is approximately 10.2 meter square. And now the utility supply. Like the energy that we are going to supply through utility is UA LMTD. U is 250 kilocalories. And A is 10.2 and LMTD is 17.93 degrees centigrade. So that means we are going to supply approximately 45,710 kilocalorie per hour of energy. Now, the time, the distillation time is nothing but demand by supply. The process demand divided by the utility supply. That means theoretically, if you are going to consider the heat transfer area as 10.2 meters square, you are getting the distillation time as 6 hours. This is the theoretical thing, but during the course of distillation, what will happen is as the distillation time is going to increase, the volume inside the reactor is going to reduce. So what will happen is the effective heat transfer area will reduce. Why? Because the occupancy is going to reduce. If you are going to calculate 
the demand as well as the supply at a single point of time you are going to get a approximate value it's not a accurate thing now in order to get the accurate value we have to estimate the time and we need to estimate the occupancy for each and every hour so that you will be getting an appropriate value now let's see how to do that here i'll be mentioning the first column as time in hours and the second is the reaction mass in liters the third column is distillate volume in liters fourth column is retained volume this is going to be in liters now we need to link up the total formula here okay the time i'll be taking is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 okay and coming to the reaction mass volume the initial volume is 4000 liter and the distillate volume is m lambda divided by u l m t d i'll mention the formula here sorry uh, u l m t d by lambda distillate volume equals to u a l m t d divided by lambda so this is the formula which you are going to use now this the distillate volume is going to be the first one u here the overall heat transfer coefficient is 250 the next one is a the total heat transfer area is 12.75 m square multiplied by the occupancy occupancy nothing but the reaction mass volume divided by the reactor capacity okay into 1000 now i'll be getting a the next one is lmtd lmtd is nothing but that we have calculated here in this case it is 17.93 now i have to divide it with the latent heat the latent heat is 90 kilo calorie per kg now in this case we will be getting in kgs to convert this kgs i am going to divide it with density divide by 0.868 now we got 585 liters of distillate water in the first one hour now the retained volume is going to be 4000 minus 585 it is 3450 and coming to second hour the retained volume is going to be the reaction mass volume take this now the distillate volume instead of doing the calculation again and again i am going to fix the values here i am going to freeze the formula okay so i'll just try to copy and paste it okay in this case the end point is 500 liter 
I am going to repeat the same calculation till I got the retained volume as 500 liter approx. Just try to copy and paste the same formula or else you can use control D. If you are able to see the end point we are going to achieve in between 13 and 14 hours. We can say it in the range of approx 13 and a half hours or 13 hours we are going, we are able to take. And coming to the first calculation, we got a time of 6 hours. If you are able to see, this is the appropriate one. Why? Because we have calculated the distillate volume for each and every hour. And the distillation rate is going to reduce as the effective heat transfer area is going to reduce. So we can consider that this calculation is going to give us the appropriate values. So the distillation time is 13 hours. Why? Because we got the end point as 512 liter in this case. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching our video. If you are like our content, please subscribe to this videos. Please subscribe to our channel as well as you can promote it in your network. Thanks a lot. Good night everyone.